my ancestors discovered a million and a half ways to use the potato. We come from the people that brought you red hair and green eyes, and the Fighting Irish isn't just a football team to us. It's every family gathering. I'm Mexican-American, and honestly don't even know that much Spanish, but I do remember as a kid, my mama always used to tell me, mijo, dime con quien andas y te diré quien eres. Meaning, you tell me who your friends are, and I'll tell you who you are. Or at least, I think that's what that meant. I'm Nigerian. I'm from the people that made jollof rice, egusi soup, and pounded yam. My people handcraft coral beads, tie head ties, and sometimes sing off key. I'm Scottish, Spanish, and French. My people made French onion soup, made bullfighting a sport, and made it socially acceptable for men to wear skirts. And I'm black. I'm from the people of very sleeping grandmas, delicious soul food Sunday dinners, and occasional freestyle battles. I'm German and a little bit of everything else. I was a small town kid. I was never up to date with the latest trend or song. The only Nene I was familiar with came from a horse on the farm I grew up on. But none of these things define us. I am a Christian. My identity, my identity is so much more than what eyes can see. My identity cannot solely be explained by cultural stereotypes and traditions. Although I bear many names, black, Nigerian, African American, it is through the atoning work of Christ that I've been given a new name, Christian. I've been favored with the privilege that goes beyond skin color. I've been undeservingly claimed as a son of the Most High. I've been changed by the gospel. Hear this, the God who spoke spinning worlds into being, created men for the sole purpose of seeing and, and displaying his displayed glory. But being far from impressed, we in our utter wickedness suppress to our shame this marvelous truth known by all, namely that God is supreme and worthy of our complete allegiance. And in our, and in our disobedience, we paid homage to images of ourselves, placing worthless idols on elevated shelves of our hearts. Thus, we were dangerously in enmity with God. But God being rich in mercy, sent his own son as a sacrifice on the cross for our sins so that we might be called out of this darkness into his marvelous light in order to become members of one body. One body, fully justified, being sanctified, anticipating the day that we join brothers and sisters from every nation, every tribe, every color and background, together beholding the glory of the Lamb, singing in perfect harmony, holy, holy, holy. holy. A beautiful, multi-ethnic bride, worshiping together in unity. Unity? But what happened? Because all too often I hear this gospel preached from the pulpits of segregated churches. What went wrong? It seems that these days people are more concerned with the color of Jesus' skin rather than the message of reconciliation that he preached. Why do people pledge more allegiance to their ethnic group or political group when they should be upholding Christ's cause? What happens when they will know us by the love we have for one another? Dear Christian, do, do you, you have, have love for the, the body? body? The whole body, every member, with all of our traits, colors, cultures, stereotypes, issues, and inconsistencies. I'm not asking how many Bible verses did you quote, or how many John Piper sermons you've listened to. I'm asking, will you love? Will you love enough to break down cultural and societal boundaries, to embrace your blood-bought brothers and sisters? Will you love enough to bear one another's burdens and weep with those who weep, even when the color of their skin doesn't match your own? Will you love all of your brothers and sisters, or will you just tolerate them? Will you love enough to be patient? 
Will you love enough to be kind? Will you love enough to forgive? Will you love? Love always trusts. It always protects. It always hopes. And love always perseveres. Love is not only the commandment. It, it is, is the cure. cure.